Welcome to lecture four, the lecture about viruses and prions. This lecture, like a lot of the other ones, does have a mix of old videos and new videos. Um, so just hang in there, it'll be fine, and you'll learn what you need to learn. And there is a lot to learn about viruses and prions because this is a very deep and very important topic. Understanding what's different about viruses and bacteria and prions is critical to understanding how we treat them, how we talk about them, how we expect them to act. And so before we make predictions, before we talk about them, we really need to know what they are and how they operate. And so that this lecture will get you there. Um, so I want to start with some big picture slides that really get at what a virus is and then we'll look at the parts of a virus and we'll look at some concepts around viruses and we'll look at how they replicate and we'll look at a big example and then we'll look at prions. So let's get into it. So a virus is information. It's a nucleic acid sequence. So um, what are some nucleic acids? You should be able to name RNA and DNA. Those are the nucleic acids we think about most. And so um, a virus is just one of those sequences and it encodes information that reprograms a cell. And it forces that cell to make virus particles or what we call virions. Um, so a virus really is the information that encodes controlling a cell and it encodes how to make a virion. So <clears throat> it is just that information. We can, in a laboratory, um, make any virus. We can't design viruses, that's beyond what we understand how to do, but we could take a virus sequence, a, gen a nucleic acid sequence, and get it started. So again, I want to make that clear. We, as far as I know, no one on earth knows enough to design a new virus. Um, they're all way too complicated for any of us to understand, but um, we can take the nucleic acid sequence and put it in a cell and get it to start acting like a virus. You can't really do that with any other living thing. You can't take the DNA from a human cell and put it in a test tube and get a human cell to start being a cell. But viruses are simpler. Virions are the things we draw pictures of. If you've seen a picture of COVID with those spikes um, and the, the RNA inside it, that's a virion. So that's the form that moves between host cells. That's the form that takes the nucleic acid from one cell to the next. So I want to show you kind of an analogy I use. Um, we can think of a dandelion plant. And you may be familiar with this. When a dandelion plant um, is done being a flower, it makes these seeds that are blown away on the wind. And a seed, its job is to carry the DNA and whatever else is necessary so that when it lands in a good place, a new plant will grow. And a virion, or virus particle, those mean the same thing, it's the same idea. Its job is to take the nucleic acids from one place to another place. And then the nucleic acids direct everything else. So um, if that was a virion, this is a virus. It's all the different possible forms from um, the, that seed floating in the air, the seed when it is planted in the ground, to up the whole plant with the roots and the leaves and the flower. Because the nucleic acids, the DNA in this case, carried in the seed, encodes the information for making all of this. Um, so this whole thing would be analogous to the virus well, this would be the virion or virus particle. So this is one part of a virus's life cycle. Um, so we, we do want to be careful in how we talk about it and what we're saying. And the virions, again, all they do is 
deliver nucleic acids to a new cell, and that's all they are capable of doing. Um, the nucleic acids pretty much have to do everything once they get into a host cell. And so the, the complicated stuff that viruses do happens inside a host cell. And so um, to understand viruses, we have to understand host cells in a lot of detail. And we won't really do that in this course, and you may not, you may not ever do that, but if you want to read the literature about viruses, if you want to read the articles coming out about how um, SARS-CoV-2 replicates, you need to know a lot about cell biology to understand that stuff. You need to understand how cells work at a very detailed level um, to understand how a virus reprograms a cell. So what information is on the nucleic acids from a virus? What is encoded on the RNA or DNA inside a virion? Um, well, generally the, those nucleic acids encode proteins and the host cell is going to make those proteins. And they could be regulatory proteins that change the way a host cell acts. They could be uh, the structural proton, proteins that make up a new virion. They could be um, special enzymes that the virus needs for making um, new nucleic acids. And I'll, I'll walk you through this later on. When you see specific examples of this, come back to these slides and this will make more sense. Um, we can compare viruses, virions, this stuff, to living things, and you'll see that viruses are not really living. So, um, first of all, virions are not cells. We don't think of them as alive. Um, the vast majority of them, we wouldn't ever think of them as alive. They don't divide. They don't do cell division. They don't grow bigger and then split into two new cells. That is not a thing viruses ever do. They don't take in sugar from the environment and convert it into ATP. They don't do respiration. They don't do fermentation. They don't make vitamins. Um, they don't make their own proteins. They don't have ribosomes. So they can't make proteins on their own. They need a host cell to make the proteins. Um, the molecules on the surface of a virion exist just to get to a new host cell and evade the immune system. So that's that's really all you're looking at on the outside of a virion, all those spike proteins. All they're trying to do is hide from the immune system and then attach to a host cell. But virions themselves, they are non-modal. They don't have flagella or cilia. They don't move. They just bounce around um, in the air or in liquid. And they don't secrete anything. They don't release toxins that poison us. Bacteria do that, fungi do that, protists do that, uh, virions don't do that, viruses don't do that. Um, and because of this, they're not, we can't use things like antibiotics on them. They don't have a viral ribosome we can inhibit. They don't have peptidoglycan we can inhibit. And they don't have much in common with each other, so we, we can't really get one drug that's going to work against all viruses. Um, the things you'll see a virus doing to the host range from um, damaging the cells to killing the cells to changing the way uh, the immune system works to all the way to changing the host cell DNA. And this is something we see there are a lot of viruses that cause mutations in host cells and some viruses directly will cause cancers. Um, some, um, yeah, that is the thing that we'll talk about later. So size-wise, we can compare virus particles or virions to bacteria and then compare those to a human cell. And so the human cells that you'd learn about in, in A&P 
are, are much bigger than a bacterial cell, and a bacterial cell is much bigger than most virions. So all this cell has to do tons of stuff. This cell has to make its own energy out of chemicals it gets from the environment, and it has to make proteins, it has to make nucleic acids, it has to encode everything and synthesize everything. It has to grow and get bigger and then split into two new cells. These things don't have to do any of that. All they have to do is get their nucleic acid into here or into here. Um, so we're going to look a lot at virions and about the parts of them and what they do. So here are the parts. There's going to be a core, which we don't talk about much, but it's the place where the RNA or DNA is. Viruses can have RNA genomes. Um, that's another weird thing about them that you will see. We will talk a lot about capsids. Capsids are the proteins that surround the nucleic acids and protect them. And they're made up of proteins called capsomeres. And they act like self-assembling structures. So capsomeres come together around the nucleic acid and form um, a repeating structure of a capsid. Some viruses have envelopes. Those are um, lipid bilayers that wrap around the virion. Um, and so like SARS-CoV-2 that causes COVID-19, it has an envelope that wraps around it. And that envelope can have a lot of different functions, as we will see. And then most virions have spike proteins. These are proteins that stick out the side and most of what these do is attached to a new host cell. So here are some capsid shapes that we see in nature. And these are all based on the capsomere proteins and how they assemble kind of randomly. And we, um, what we see, a lot of them are icosahedral. So the capsomeres make one of these um, regular structures. And sometimes We'll have an envelope around it, but the capsid itself would be this shape. Other times we have um, spiral or helical um, capsids made from <clears throat> capsomeres that arrange themselves into helices. So there are several different um, viruses that are classified this way. A lot of times I'll tell you, when I describe a viral disease, I'll tell you the shape of the capsid because that's a way we can kind of classify them. Um, I'll tell you, like, these would be helical, these would be icosahedral, these would be complex because they have multiple shapes at the same time. These um, are viruses that infect bacteria. They're called bacteriophages. The rest of them are not bacteriophages. So smallpox affects humans, poliovirus is humans, herpes simplex is humans. This is a, a virus that infects plants. This virus can affect all mammals. These are um, viruses, these are, well, these are virions. These are photographs of virions that infect um, archaea and they're different shapes. These look like wine bottles or clubs or something and that's a capsid of a different shape. We don't really understand how they get those shapes. We don't know much about them because it's hard to grow them and um, it's not that important. Um, viral envelopes are very important. A virion can um, have an envelope and the envelope, like I said, is a phospholipid bilayer and it's been stolen from the host cell. So viruses can't make lipids. They can't organize lipids into membranes. They steal that from the host cell. And so where do you have lipid bilayers in a host cell? Well, you have them in uh, the nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi vesicles, and the cell membrane. And typically um, a virus is gonna steal from either the nuclear envelope or the cell membrane. And if they take it from the cell membrane, it's going to have the glycoproteins um, and glycolipids that identify it as a host cell. 
so proteins and glycolipids that were already there in the membrane, well, the virus now gets to wrap itself in those and pretend to be the host cell. So it can be in the bloodstream and it will just look like a cell. Um, but also viruses will have the spike proteins. That's what these little things are supposed to be. Um, and those could be used for very specific viral things. So this would be a capsid um, of a naked virus. That's a virus without an envelope. And this would be the capsid of an enveloped virus with the envelope around it. And then this is just another way to draw it in a more complicated situation. This would be like the influenza virus where the capsid, instead of being a polyhedron like this, is a helix around directly around the nucleic acid. And then there's a envelope around the whole thing. So envelopes matter because they affect our ability to find the viruses using the immune system. Um, they help the virus get into cells and they protect a virus. But there, there are two like practical things to know about envelopes when you're thinking about uh, protecting yourself from viruses. Um, there's the idea of uh, they are fragile. You can use like ethanol to disrupt the envelope. And if it disrupts the envelope, the virus can't get into host cells. So that's why something like a hand sanitizer can be useful against viruses that have envelopes because it disrupts the envelope. Um, but those wouldn't work against naked viruses because naked viruses are surrounded by tough proteins that wouldn't be damaged that way. Um, let's stop this video here and then I'll get into the next one. Um, what we've seen here is the idea of what viruses are, and we've looked at things that a virion might contain. We're going to talk more about different aspects of virus biology that we would care about, and then we'll get into more of what viruses do inside cells and how they do what they do. And the end goal there is for you to be able to describe how a virus works what it does in a cell. And I want you to be able to explain to people how viruses are different from bacteria, how they are different from other cells. So that's um, one big thing I want you to get from these slides by the time we're done. So I will see you at the next video.